So for today's video, we're going to be looking at how to solve a primal simplex algorithm using Excel Solver. So for a lot of these linear programming problems, there isn't much content out there, especially not on Excel. So I had to figure it all out by myself, uh, and I spent a lot of time doing that. And if someone just made a video on Excel, I would have gotten it much quicker. So I thought maybe I should explain it to whoever needs help with it. And then you don't have to spend weeks trying to figure it out um, by making it easier for yourself, you know? So this is we're going to be using the primal simplex algorithm, which is the easier one. I'm also going to have a video on the two-phase simplex method, which is um, a bit different, but it's pretty much the same. You're still going to be doing the same stuff. So let's just start. Okay, so this is the um, problem we're given. We actually, I actually derived this out of a um, word problem, but it's not really necessary to add a word problem now. So I'm just going to set up the constraints over here. We have our objective function, which is going to be 3x plus 2x2, which is just x and y. And then we have our three constraints over here. <clears throat> so, um, oh wait, sorry, I'm supposed to actually show this. So here's our objective function, and here are our three constraints. So... To actually set it up, we're going to, just give me a minute, we're going to actually have to input it into our tableau. So we're going to have just the normal x1, x2, and then we're going to add all our s variables, our slack variables. So s1, s2, s3, and then we're going to have our right-hand side, which is just going to be um, what our constraints are equal to. Keep in mind, for primal simplex, all of the all of the equations actually need to be less than. If any of them are greater than, then, then you're going to have to do two-phase simplex. So just make sure all of your uh, all of your constraints are smaller than, because then it's not a uh, primal simplex. You can actually do primal simplex. It's going to have to be do done differently. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what is our largest negative, or technically our smallest negative, which is going to be this column right over here. Let's just make it yellow for now so you can see what I'm working with. We're going to have the right hand side, we're going to find the ratio now. The right hand side, we're just going to press and, uh, equals, click on right hand side, divide, and then we're going to do it divide by the selected row we chose. So this one is obviously negative three, it's the smallest negative, technically the largest number. Well, not technically, it's not the largest number, it's actually the smallest one. But it's going to be this one divided by our selected column, enter. And then we're just going to drag, just like that. So now we need to identify our smallest ratio, which is going to be 40. So this is going to be our row, and this is going to be our column. So clearly here, right over here where they intersect, this is going to be our pivot column. So keep that in mind. I'm just going to copy this and this like so. Let's just clear, make the font clear so it's not confusing to anyone. You can just do no fill. Perfect. Okay, so now we just need to do equals. So this is very important. Click right over here, divide, click, and then press F4. It might be different on Mac or whatever. But basically, you're trying to lock in over here. You're trying to lock it in. So every single value is going to divide by this value over here. That's why we're dividing. And you're going to do that every single time we start a new column, That's a, the, a new tableau. It's going to be the first thing we do. So this is going to be our pivot column over here. Click drag to the RHS. Don't drag to the ratio because it's not actually necessary. And not only that, it's you're going to have to do you're gonna have to divide the ratio again so don't drag it all the way to the ratio so now we're gonna do another one so it's gonna be equals click minus click f4 multiplied by this one perfect so every single row over here enter drag and now we're just gonna do that again for every single other thing it's quite a tedious process, but this is the fastest way to do it. So click drag. We're going to do equals 
this one up here, so the, the row we're dealing with, minus same number, F4, so locking it in, multiplied by the pivot, bam, enter. You're going to do this many times, many, many times. So now we're going to look for our smallest negative again. So the only negative we have is this one. So obviously it's going to be this one. I'm just going to do this again so you can see what I'm working with. Now we're going to do the ratio. See, this is why you shouldn't drag it all the way to the ratio because we have to do this again. So we're going to do the right-hand side divided by this. Now we're just going to drag. So, yeah, this one is dividing by zero, which is obviously wrong. So we're just going to remove it. Now we're looking for our smallest ratio again, which is going to be 20. Click. There we go. Now let's copy again. Just like this. Perfect. Let me just clear over here. All right. So this is going to be our pivot column once again. So click. Right? We just need to align these two. Okay. Click. Then it's going to be divide. Click. F4. Locking it in. Oh. F4, bam. There we go. So drag, drag. Perfect. Now we do it again. Click, minus, click, F4, multiplied by our pivot, bam. Perfect, perfect. We can already see that there is another negative over here. So this is going to be um, the selected row we're going to be doing again. So click. F4 multiplied, 1, bam. Oh. Okay, perfect, perfect. Let's drag this one's a bit stubborn, it looks like. Click, minus, F4 multiplied. You'll, you'll get actually start getting pretty quick at this when you've done it as many times as I have. Um, not that I'm, I'm necessarily being very quick right now. But, okay, anyway, so... Here we have our negative column again. Just want to click here, yellow. So this is going to be our only negative. So if there was another one that was maybe a bit larger, like negative three, for example, we'd be using that one, but this is the only one. So just ratio again, this right-hand side divided by the selected column. This is going to give us a negative number, which is not going to work. We don't actually work with negative numbers unless it's a negative zero, but that's a whole different story but anyway in general or anytime you never work with negatives you only you can only select ratios that are um, positive so if you for example get only negatives in your ratio that means you've done something wrong you should redo your tableau again and then just methodically look through all of the steps you've done so far so copy paste Copy. Oh, I'm already out of breath. Very tedious work. Um, no fill. And then we're just going to do look at our pivot column again. So it's going to be equals this divided by this. F4, enter. Perfect. So drag and drag. Perfect. Equals this minus this. F4 multiplied. Pivot column. Drag drag and here comes the the one we've been waiting for we're gonna see if our values are positive now or not oh that's a good sign i think oh, all of them are positive there we go okay so let me just do this last one before explaining it's gonna be drag drag perfect so this means that there are no negatives anymore, which means we have reached our optimal solution, which is great. So now all we need to do is we need to check for basic and non-basic variables. So unless you don't know, for in case you don't know, basic variables are we going to look, let's, let's look at x1, for example. This is a basic variable because there are zeros and ones. x2 is also a basic variable because there are zeros and ones. So this one, for example, is not basic because there are ones, but there aren't any zeros and they're negative ones as well. So it doesn't count. This one, however, is also a non-basic variable, so it doesn't matter. 
1, 2, 1, negative 1. So it's not 1, 0, 1, 0. If there is a negative 1 or a 2 or a 5 or a whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be basic. This one is basic, 0, 0, 1, 0. It doesn't matter what the order is. It just matters if they are if they're not ones or zeros, it's not basic. So this 180 over here is going to be the optimal solution. So it's going to be the answer. So let's pull up this over here. So our answer is going to be so our max z is equal to three. Now let's check. Our x1 is not as a basic variable, which means it's going to correspond to the values we got over here. So this is going to be 001, which means corresponds to this value over here. Oh, whoops. This value right over here, 20. So let's actually test our answer over here to see if it equates to 180. So it's going to be 20, right? So it's going to be plus, which is this one over here. So this is going to be our thing over here. So it's going to be then 2 multiplied by, let's see what the other one is. Our x2 is also basic, which means it corresponds to this value over here. Why do I keep doing that? This value right over here. So it's going to be 60. So let's actually put it into our calculator, even though you can just do it in your head. But just for safety's sake, 3 multiplied by 20, which is 60, plus 2 multiplied by 60, which is 120. That's going to give us 180. So it corresponds to this value over here. So our S3 variable over here, which is our slack variable, corresponds to this value right over here, which means our S3 is equal to 20. So that is pretty much it for solving um, primal simplex or any type of this related question in Excel. It's pretty tedious work, especially when you get a lot of constraints. Uh, they can get very large and then you have to do so many of those damn equals, minus, multiplies. It's very annoying. So yeah, so it's actually pretty straightforward in, in reality.